Heavy traffic means more than getting home late. When the rubber meets the road, the result can mean increased maintenance costs, and it can have a major impact on our environment. Rougher roads also mean tires wear out sooner. It's been estimated that 280 million tires are discarded in America every year. Burning them causes noxious smoke, and burying them quickly overflows landfills. Because of this, many states have banned both kinds of disposal for worn-out tires. More cars, deteriorating roads, piles of tires. It's a vicious economic and environmental circle. The contents of this bottle may hold a solution. This is granulated rubber from recycled tires. Combined with conventional highway asphalt, these ground-up tires contribute to a new kind of street surfacing. Some call them rubber roads. The streets of Thousand Oaks are a major example of rubber roads in action. Thousand Oaks city manager is Grant Brimhall. The principal benefits we feel of, of the so-called rubber roads are several. First of all, we're doing some very good recycling. In our community, last year, uh, we had about a $3 million contract, but, uh, which was more expensive than the normal system, but we were also able to keep 170,000 tires out of the dump. Secondly, when the rubber meets the road, it's meeting the rubber road, and the, the noise level drops, and so it's a, a more peaceful neighborhood. Uh, thirdly, they last a lot longer. We're able, we think, to extend a double the life of a normal street. That means that instead of paving a street or repaving it every 20 years, you're doing it every 40 years. Today, a relatively small percentage of California's highways use asphalt rubber, but Caltrans is working to determine industry standards for the future. Enthusiasts think the technology has great potential. John Corcoran is president of Manhole Adjusting Incorporated, a road resurfacing company. It would only take 40% of the federally funded roadways to include asphalt rubber as a system being utilized for that purpose to take care of the entire current waste stream of tires that's generated on an annual basis. John Corcoran's projections remain untested, but turning old tires into new roads is certainly the kind of thinking we'll need to create transportation systems that are as environmentally sound as they are economical. I think cities generally are being encouraged by a whole variety of factors, economics, environmental issues, uh, and a host of other things, to be more entrepreneurial, to look at a better way to do something than perhaps we've done it in the past. And the fact that we've done it of one certain way for 50 or 100 or, or more years doesn't mean that that's the best way to do it. Nearly every day in Los Angeles, some one and a half million trips are made on buses and trains, mostly by people going to and from work. But bus transportation can be used for fun, too. This is one RTD bus stop where fun, education, and entertainment are all just a few steps away. We've come to Exposition Park, just south of downtown Los Angeles. The Coliseum and Sports Arena are here. So are the Afro-American Museum, Los Angeles County Natural History Museum, and the California Museum of Science and Industry. And there's the Aerospace Museum and the IMAX Theater, showing movies on a screen four stories high. It's all in easy reach by regularly scheduled RTD buses. For further information about a route near you, call 213-626-4455. Well, that's it for this episode of Transit 2000. On our next show, we're going to explore air travel with a brand new space plane. And we'll ride on some trains that haven't been seen in Southern California for half a century. We'll investigate the pros and cons of toll roads in Orange County and a lot more. I'm Diana Ortelli. And I'm Joseph Bendy. We'll see you next time. <laughs>